And now I would like to welcome Dr. Paswati Bhattacharya. She's a global integrative medicine leader, expert in Ayurvedic chemistry, holistic health and biodiversity, Fulbright specialist in global public health, and she came to join us from the United States. Welcome. Um. Thank you. Is this might be better. Um, you don't have to touch anything. I think it's already on. Um, I don't know. This one maybe. It, it should. Work. It should work. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much. Namaste, Dobreden. Good day to everyone. Good afternoon. I'm Dr. Baswati. I'd like you to think about several questions as we enter into this Congress for the next three days. The first question is the hardest one about healing, and that is, why do we hide? Thank you to the members who have brought us together in Prague to the city of tunnels and the largest palace, one of the largest in Europe. Above the surface, we see something very grand, very beautiful, very striking, and very strong. And the city is also full of tunnels. In fact, underneath this very space, there are tunnels from the year 900 of the Common Era. These tunnels would connect people who didn't want to show everyone what the truth is because they were hiding. And what I have learned over the last few days, not only the name Praha, which comes from Pragya Deva and has a deep con uh, connection to Sanskrit, and to many healing systems, the alchemies of the world and the various medicines of various cultures that have come through this space, this center, which was in fact the center of the Western world. But it was also a space where many people hid and I've been thinking about that for the last few days. Why do we hide? So I learned about the index and uh, it was very disturbing for me because if you live in the USA, as I do, you never hear about the reality, which I know was true, where people were oppressed, suppressed, and thus depressed, and not allowed to express the wild creativity of their heart. When I walk through your city, what I see is gray, black squares, very somber streets, but they are strong. And what I also see is this flourishing of immense creativity from doorknobs to architecture to the various shops. So there are people that are hiding because they were forced to hide and they are trying to become creative because it is a way of healing. This is such a parallel to what healers around the world have felt under the hegemony and the force and oppression of mainstream medicine. As you may know, I'm also a trained pharmacologist at some of the best schools in the world. Neuroscience is my first background. I'm also a modern medical doctor, so I stand in that group of the American Medical Association, the bullies, the people who will, they are the thieves, they are the killers, they are the people who pull power from others. So we are part of that group as mainstream doctors, those of us who are not open-minded. And we sometimes don't see the oppressed. And so as I walk through the city of Prague, I keep thinking about the question, why are we forced to hide? And what does that do to our healing? The second question, and I'd invite you to have that conversation with the others around you. Why do we hide? And what happens to us when we are witnessed for the truth of what we are? Many times there are tears. Many times the trauma can start to heal. 
But many times there is an embarrassment and shame because Czech went through 44 years of hiding. That's a generation or two. Same in India. My parents lived through partition and the British oppression. And they have put into me... Uh, sorry, ma'am. Uh, what that oppression uh, has created. The second question that I invite you to think of is, how do we heal? So the narrative around healing and what is healing needs to change. It is not for people who are only credentialed. I got the credentials, and one of the reasons I got them is because I am always going to be brown, and I'm always going to be a woman. And so to walk through the doors of people who are allowed to be the healers, I had to get the best degrees from the best places. And I represent all of those people who have been oppressed and not allowed to heal. The way that we heal is to change the narrative on what is allowed. So it's not about having degrees, it's about having the competence. There are plenty of people in this room, as I look around, who have an energy around their, their beings. They are healers. They touch others, they listen to others. They move other people in ways that the people can heal. Those are healers. Then there's people who have degrees like me, who sometimes are healers and sometimes are not healers. They're just credentialed people. We need to start asking the question of competence. And we need to start looking at what is evidence of healing and start to change the policies, change the lawmakers, and help them to understand that the way to heal is actually the way through that door for everyone. Many of you know that the original Jay-Z, who is Joseph Zezulka, had spent time healing some of those oppressionists. And that is why he was not murdered. That is why he lived, because he was a healer. So how do we heal? We find people that will help us heal. And sometimes that's not the doctor. Sometimes it's not the one that has the evidence-based medicine. As someone that helps generate evidence-based medicine, I can tell you that the data often don't apply to people. They don't apply to individuals. They apply to averages. And averages are not individuals. The third question is, what is truth? And in Sanskrit, we have a term called satya buddhi. Satya buddhi is actual truth and the intellect to be able to hold that truth and to understand and process that truth. So we have truth in evidence-based medicine, but we also have lies in evidence-based medicine. We have truth when we allow people to walk through the door and see what they're capable of. And that action allows us to see what is the truth of that person. We have the ability to witness people and see what they express. And that is sometimes truth. And the truth, according to the ancient Sanskrit text, is what actually heals. And so I invite you to look at what healing is this weekend. Because after all, this is not the World Disease Congress. This is the World Health Congress. And for those of you who think that the truth of the empire is the WHO, it should possibly not be the World Health Organization. It should be the World Disease Organization until they can prove to us that they understand what health is. And I And I hope that you will challenge all of the speakers to speak about what is health and to really define it. I'll end by saying that I went to a conference of the WHO as a primary care doctor. And behind closed doors, they asked each other. It was about 200 doctors in the room. They said, we don't know how to define health. We only know the indices of what is disease. And they showed a lot of data on hypertension and how to measure hypertension, stroke and how to measure stroke. All the evidence is about disease. And they were saying on the stage, and I won't take names, but they are some of the biggest names in health policy or health care. They were saying, we don't know how to define disease. They don't want to take the Sanskrit definition. They don't want to take the yoga definition. They don't want to take the anthroposophic definition. They don't want to take the homeopathic definition. They want a definition that will allow them to rule, but they themselves are confused. And so this room of healers 
is needed for us to come up and gather together, make a statement, and put it into the world, what is health and what is healing. I know some of you are sitting and doubting some of what I say, and there are some comments happening. So I invite you to find me in the next three days if you disagree, because as we witness each other, we will heal each other, and we will move forward. Thank you for listening to me. It is certainly time for change. It is about finding common path and language between the traditional medicine and the conventional medicine. It is about empathy. It is about truth. I thank you, Dr. Paswati, for your passionate contribution. <laughs>